Hello, my name is Avery Gosfield, and I direct Luci Dadium, an early music group based in Geneva and Milan. I'm here to present our program, Sounds from Shylock's Venice, originally created in 2016 in honor of a double anniversary, the 500 years since the founding of the Venice Ghetto and the 400 years since William Shakespeare's death. Before I start, I'd like to give my sincere thanks to Jennifer Jankel and Gil Carpas for graciously inviting me to participate in this series. Enrico Fink curated the religious repertoire and worked with me on adapting the spoken texts. Last but not least, I'd like to thank my fellow band members. Although I'm behind the concept and the research, Lucidadium is definitely a collective effort where everyone has their say on the instrumentation and arrangements. For the past 15 years, Lucidadium has been working on a project devoted to the music of the Jews in the Middle Ages and the Renaissance. When most people think of Jewish early music, they usually think of the works of Salomone Rossi or perhaps early 20th century Sephardic songs played on recorders and viola da gamba. However, next to this severe lack of musical material, a kind of shadow repertoire has survived. The hundreds and hundreds of poems by Jewish authors that were probably performed vocally, at least upon occasion. Written in Hebrew and our diaspora languages, they cover a vast range of themes from high to low, from specifically Jewish to more general, and are of an undeniable artistic, cultural, and historical interest. Their authors switch from one language to another with ease, translating, transposing, borrowing forms and subject matter from the surrounding cultures, a real reflection of the intense and widespread cultural exchange that went on at the time. There is only one problem. 500 years ago, everyone knew the tune, and very few people could read or write musical notation. As a consequence, with only a few exceptions, the only thing that survives today of these possible songs is their texts. However, with some detective work, for example, finding a poem with a similar form that is set to music in a contemporary and geographically appropriate Gentile source, or finding a similar piyut with an archaic melody that has survived in the oral tradition, with a lot of work and a little bit of luck, a kind of best guess melody for performance can sometimes be constructed. This pretense and the work that goes with it is at the center of Lucidarium's Jewish music project. Sounds from Shylock's Venice was in part inspired by James Joyce's Ulysses, with Shylock and 16th century Venice standing in for Leopold Bloom and 1904 Dublin. The program tries to evoke an imaginary soundscape what a typical Jewish moneylender might have heard on a typical day as they wandered in and out of the Venice ghetto. During this period, the Jewish population of Italy was roughly divided into three ethnic groups, or nazioni, which were also divided up geographically. The Tedeschi, or Ashkenazim, who lived primarily in the north. The Italiani, who were primarily in the center with Rome at the heart of the community, and the Spagnoli, Sephardic Jews who generally lived in the South. Venice was an exception to this rule in that, for various reasons, it was home to all three ethnic groups. The Venetian government encouraged Sephardic settlement because the Spagnoli provided precious economic and political ties to Turkey and all of the southeastern Mediterranean. However, with the establishment of the ghetto in 1516, these three nazioni were all forced into the ghetto. This meant that a group of people with different national origins, mother tongues, customs, food tastes, clothing habits, gender roles, religious practices, liturgical melodies, professions, and socioeconomic levels were all squeezed together into an uneasy cohabitation in a limited living space. In addition, the ghetto was a porous space, generally only closed between dusk and dawn, which meant that, on top of all of this, there was also a great deal of interaction between its residents and the outside world. For the non-Italian Jews, this brought on a measured but constant assimilation of Venetian and Italian customs and language. I hope I can be forgiven if, with this program, I've acted a bit like the Venetian government in trying to squeeze a whole lot of stuff into a small space. The resultant mishmash is made up of basically four elements. One, our own song reproposals, based on poems in the languages that would have been heard in the ghetto. Hebrew and Yiddish, as well as Spanish, Italian, and even Catalan, all written in Hebrew characters. Two, religious music, 
drawn from the rich Venetian liturgical and paraliturgical traditions. Three, the music, drawn from mainstream sources that all Venetians, Jewish or Gentile, might have sung, played, danced to, or listened to during their everyday lives and celebrations. Last but not least are the spoken texts, taken from the Venetian archives and the autobiography of Rabbi Leon Modena, in which Modena talks frankly about his own gambling addiction and the murder of his son, Yuval, at the hands of a vicious Sephardi gang. Absolutely recommended reading for anyone who wants a real sense of what life in the ghetto was like. Now, I won't have the time to talk about every piece or about the long process that brings them from manuscript to performance. However, let's have a look at the first two. The opening piece, Ora vien o bella sposa, is a practically unknown Judeo-Italian poem that treats the same themes found in Le Cadodi. It was written by Kabbalist rabbi Mordechai Dato at about the same time as Shlomo Alkabetz's much better known poem. Ora vieno bella sposa, te Shabbat festa famosa, mia regina moi fermosa, ora vien, o bella sposa. Come now, o beautiful bride, thou Shabbat celebrated fest, my very lovely queen, come now, o beautiful bride. A simple quatrain, four lines, of seven or eight syllables each. Numerous contemporary songs use the same kind of structure. For example, this one from a 1574 lute manuscript by Cosimo Bottegari. So from around the same time as Dato's poem. In Toledo una donzella vaghe bella con mi sol tutte legge dratte snella nessun sa quel che la vuol Apologies for the American accent and poor vocal technique. You'll hear it sung by professionals later. I just wanted to show that if we use the tune for Dato's poem, the combination of text and melody is not completely implausible. Ora vieno bella sposa, te shabbat festa famosa, mia regina moi fermosa, ora vieno bella sposa. More importantly, it allows a 21st century audience to learn about an incredible example of a 16th century Judeo-Italian Kabbalistic poem. The second piece, the Serai Falid, is a comic account about a local incident, a fire that broke out on the Venetian Rialto, written, however, almost entirely in Yiddish. It's written by the famed grammarian and poet, Elias Bachor Levita, just one member of the important German-Jewish community that made Venice a little like the Lower East Side and a center of Yiddish printing in the 16th century. Its author indicates it as Ein Lied benigen zur Michelot, a song to the melody of zur Michelot, and almost miraculously, a copy of a zur Michelot has survived, complete with musical notation, in a transcription made by a Christian monk in Germany around 1510. Thanks to this case of 16th century ethnomusicological fieldwork, we have a documented link to a notated 16th century melodic model. Moreover, it's the only piece in the whole program where we've been so lucky. On this note, a closing disclaimer. As with any early music performance, the sounds heard here probably have little in common with those heard 500 years ago. However, our aim was never historical accuracy, but rather an attempt, using all the data at our disposition, combined with a good dose of creativity, to evoke a special time and a special place in Jewish and world history. The Venice of Leon Modena, Elias Bachur Levita, and of course, Shylock. Good evening from Jerusalem on the Isonzo. So we are in the, the um, synagogue of Gorizia in Italy. 
We're coming out to you from Jerusalem on the Isonzo, going to Jerusalem of the north. Um, and we're very happy to be here. We are a little less happy not to be in Vilnius tonight, where we should have been giving this concert at the Center of Tolerance, the Vilna Gaon Museum, in honor of the Vilna Gaon's uh, year and in honor of the 300 years of the Lithuanian Early Music Festival, Banchetto Musicale. Thank you. I hope you'll enjoy the concert. It's called Sounds from Shylock's Venice, and it gives the soundscape of Shylock what he would have heard as he wandered in and out of the ghetto of Venice. Thank you.
sabbatta sta famosa mia regina mia fermosa benvenuta bella casa I would sing to you a while with what little voice I may and tell you of the fire of that awful day when Venezia was alight with a fearful blaze as big as the whole world for the wrath of our Lord. It was the most horrendous roar as Rialto went in flames. No, they cried and swore the fit man and the lame, the rich man and the whores, the poor men and the dames. The folk of every sort begged mercy of our Lord. But many turned their minds to robbery and theft, taking all that they could find till there was nothing left, hiding goods of every kind into a bag or a cleft. They kept searching more and more and thanked the goodwill of the Lord. Not Billy Quaking Vincent Zing and mit meine boys and call von neue Gesen Mengen, and the Yerman wissen soll von der Magd in der Magie, ich weiß, die wissen, dass das in Mal zu windig in der Schrift, ich schaue Sarah auf mein Wunder. Sei sei da sangue chiara non tanta ma buona Such an unexpected boon made everyone go mad One and circles like a loon with a bucket around his head. But he fell in the lagoon and came out a deal more red and wetter than before, crying, Mercy, O oh my Lord! Still he set his mind on filling the sacks anew with baubles he could find. But he was seen by a non-Jew who struck him from behind and hit him hard and cruel to rob him of his hoard. He nearly sent him back to the Lord. Het lijkt leven, lees in mijn zeggen, ze het in de scherm genomen als een er kan ver in hem in weg en in lijf er uit zijn hals. Und wenn die dat die stikken in de riak dat klonk met pals. Er lijkt me van alles als leggen en schreeuwt om de bonnei. Of all his precious load, almost all was snatched away. Only 
to a pair of scissors did he hold, but they too fell into the bay. Genteel friends, do mark my words. Fortune doesn't change. Poor will remain, poor is poor. Yet, poor men are the chosen of our gracious Lord. Der nach Leper in der Hingassen und so hin und her. Aber jetzt verschkönt der Maschel, du wanderst Schneider Scher. Er holt sie wieder Bohren, er trägt sie nicht gar mehr. Und wir sind alle das Gemahren. Marcus Molinus, 
Ser Hieronymus Theopoulos, Ser Petrus Marcellus, Ser Franciscus Bradicari, Ser Bartolomeus Contarenus Consiliari, Ser Dominicus Trevisanus Equus Procurator, Ser Leonardus Mucenicus, Ser Zacharias Delfinius, Sapientes Consili, Ser Gaspares Maripetrus, Sapientes Terre Firme. Está provisto per diverse legge del Consiglio e dei pregadi e del Maggior Consiglio che i Giudei non possino star in questa città nostra. The law, hitherto approved, denies the Jews the right to live in our city, salvo che giorni 15 interpolati in tutto il tempo dell'anno. Sosta ezzi posti diversi altri ordini cattolici et necessari per ovviar alla perfidia ebraica che per essere a tutti noti superfluo è commemorarli. Unde, ancorché per la necessità et urgentissima condizione di tempi but for the urgent condition of these times si sta permesso it is allowed che i prefatti giudei si riducino ad abitar in Venezia. Amen. Non di essere de voler di alcun del Stato nostro che desidera vivere con timor de Dio, che da poi redutti siano andati spargendosi per tutta la terra, stando in case con cristiani et vadino, giorno e notte dove li piace, come offensione gravissima della maestà divina, et non vulgar nota de questa ben istituita Repubblica. E dunque, gli Giudei are ordered to live all together around the courtyard found in Ghetto, appresso San Hieronimo. And in order that they do not wander about all night, it has been decided that on the little bridge on the side of the ghetto and similarly at the bridge on the other side, two gates should be constructed, one for each of the named locations. The said gates shall open in the morning al suono della marangona and in the evening should be shut at midnight by four Christian custodi to be paid by the Jews themselves, as our committee shall see fit their wages to be. Departe, hey! 130, the non, hey! 44, non sinceri and sure, 8, 8, approvado dal maggior consiglio.
più brutta sai del bene che ne chiara Venite, venite, stringite, venite, venite, stringite Ola, 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 Sempre delleggiata, sta zangragliosa faccia di Yamara, sta zangragliosa faccia di Yamara. Venite, 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 chi ne va bene a serca accorciata, sia benedetto chi ti fece stare, sia benedetto chi ti fece stare. Venite, venite, stringite, venite, venite, stringite, ola, 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 mentre ho lasciato, ola, 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 mentre ho lasciato, chi ti ride di casa, chi ti ride di casa, il namorato. The great rabbi, Leone Modena, writes. During the month of Kislev, 5375, my son, Mordechai, may his memory be for a blessing, began studying the art of alchemy with a great master, the priest, Giuseppe Grillo. He applied himself so diligently and became so adept at its practices that even the most esteemed and seasoned experts of the art were amazed at how someone so young could be so knowledgeable. During the month of Yar, he set up entirely by his own hand a workshop in the Ghetto Vecchio. His first experiment was one he had carried out at the priest's house many times, using nine ounces of lead and one of silver. He was able to produce ten ounces of pure silver. I observed his actions and controlled the results. The process worked, <laughs> even if it did call for a great deal of exertion and a strain and a waiting period of two and a half months. I was able to sell the final product for six and a half lire per ounce, and according to our calculations, our earnings could reach upwards of 1,000 ducats a year. These were not vain reveries. Having consumed much of my life in alchemic pursuits, I would have certainly detected any flaw in the result. And so it would have been if Mordechai, may his memory be for a blessing, if Mordechai's mouth hadn't filled up with blood during the Sukkot celebrations of 5376, it was said it was the vapors of arsenic and salt, both necessary for the production of silver, that somehow damaged his head, forcing him to abandon such arts forever. And so it went on for two years. With Mordechai, may his memory be for a blessing, giving up alchemy altogether and limiting himself to light activities until death did come. Shami Shanna Gamba 
Anno mi scirzion.